So, I've been playing games for a long time. As time went on, I decided I truly couldn't pick a favorite. It's such a loaded term. Is it something that I keep coming back to and playing multiple times over the years? Well, there's lots of those. Or, is it something that when I think about it, I realize that it changed me as a person who loves video games? It's not about being my favorite game. It's what game is most important to me. That game is Sega's Fantasy Star. We follow four heroes, Alice, Meow, Odin, and Noah, as they travel across the three planets of Algol's solar system. The green earth-like Palma, the desert Motavia, and the ice-covered Dezorus. Fantasy Star begins as a tale of revenge, but naturally becomes much bigger than that. Looking back, it was pretty progressive for its time, but I absolutely didn't realize it at first. 1988. The day after Christmas. My 10th birthday. I spent my every last cent on the $80 Fantasy Star cartridge. My friends and I had selected the Sega Master System as our console the champion two years earlier. Arcade experiences like Space Harrier and Shinobi had sold me on the potential of those games coming home. I'd seen ads for Fantasy Star in several magazines at the time. Looking at it from a purely graphical standpoint, I knew I had to play it. I realize now that I didn't even know what kind of a game it was till I arrived home with it that day. I played for about an hour, not quite sure where to go or what to do. If I left town, I'd be quickly killed. I didn't understand why I couldn't see enemies till I was fighting them. What are experience points? What the heck are Meseda? As quickly as I'd started, I'd moved on to something that I'd gotten the day before. On a whim, I decided to give it another shot. With help from my brother, I figured out how to proceed. It turns out I had to buy the item listed as secrets three times from the nearby town. By that evening, I'd acquired my first party member. Breaking down that barrier, the next six months became consumed by Fantasy Star. My friends joined me with their own copy of the game. We traded discoveries with each other over the phone and at school. By the time Dark Falls fell on that hot August night in 1989, I was a changed person. There's a lot to be said that would be true about Fantasy Star. Its progressive, strong female lead, a virtually perfect 8-bit soundtrack, graphics that stood well beyond anything that you could play at home at the time, an epic story that took place across three fully realized planets, and not to mention a Japanese to English translation that was probably bigger than any other video game. But all that, that's secondary to me. As good as the game is, it was about the time I'd spent with it. I'd never had an experience quite like that with a video game before. And maybe, never since. But I think that's why the experience stays with me all these years later. Space Harrier was the game that made me fall in love with video games. I dropped all my quarters in the machine every time I'd hit the arcade. I love its bizarre graphics and super fast gameplay, but Space Harrier has my favorite game music of all time too. I was lucky enough to acquire a Space Harrier arcade cabinet recently, so I can revisit the experience anytime I want. You're doing great. Master Dine, but this is ridiculous. If Dine were still alive today, I'm sure he'd tell you to stop dreaming about his exciting quest, get off your butt, and set out on your own fantastic adventures. Lunar, the Silver Star, released by Working Designs for the Sega CD, had a translation that was so natural feeling for its time that I never knew I could care about video game characters as if they were actual people with personalities. Its amazing CD soundtrack and great story have stood the test of time and still remains fresh in my mind. It's a power. 